everyone! This is a video tutorial to help you understand how stereoselectivity comes into play when you're predicting the major product for an E2 reaction. So remember, we're going to be looking at that beta carbon most of all when we're looking at E2 reactions, trying to figure out which beta carbon is losing the hydrogen. Once you've established that, you then need to look at the stereoselectivity and decide if you have the potential to form an E or a Z isomer. If you do, then you're going to look at that beta carbon and decide, does it have two hydrogens attached to it or does it only have one? In the case where it has two hydrogens attached to it, you will have the major product have the E configuration over the Z. Remember, E is more stable because it keeps the bulkiest groups as far away from each other as they possibly can be. In the case, however, where your beta carbon has only one hydrogen, you could form either the E or the Z. You will only form one or the other, and you can, in fact, form the Z. The thing that's going to actually determine which you will form is the configuration of your original alkyl halide. So if it's an R or an S, will affect whether you get a major E or a major Z out of your overall reaction. So those are the things you have to keep in mind when you're overall predicting your product for an E2. First, the regioselectivity, which constitutional isomer will dominate, and then the stereoselectivity. What will happen? Will I have only E come out, or will I have only Z, or could I have a mixture of both where I primarily have E dominating? 